So there's a reputation that pumpkin has of being a pretty good dewormer, but does it actually work? I've got some new information that I've discovered that is making me think twice about it. Like many of you that raise sheep or goats or chickens, you've probably heard the reputation that pumpkin can act as a natural dewormer. My family has had the tradition for as long as we've been homesteaders to any time we're carving a pumpkin for a jack-o'-lantern, for soup, whatever, we save those guts and especially the seeds and we give them to the sheep. And sheep love it. They go for it, they gobble it up um, and it's really awesome to see. What's funny is that this year, um, I, I have only young rams. Uh, that's one disadvantage of not having any studs with them is that uh, there's no one who's been around to show them how great this is. So they didn't really go for it when I first put it out there, but they, they've eaten it now. Um, so it took them about 24 hours, maybe less. I only checked on it 24 hours later, but they ate it all. They ate all the seeds and all the guts. So I've talked about it on this channel before, um, that, that pumpkins are, are an amazing natural dewormer and I took that at the recommendation of my uh, my mentors on this and and I've heard it from many others it's kind of an old wives tale that pumpkin has a, a good natural deworming aspect to it so it comes from a property in the seed and that property is called I'm gonna read it cucurbitacin cucurbitacin probably saying that wrong which people have believed that it reduces um, parasite eggs found in, uh, in fecal tests for sheep. So I've believed this, um, I've even advised this on the channel before, but I really wanted to go in and see, you know, what does the data say? I love, there, there's a study for everything and I wanted to find a recent good study. So let me dive into a little bit of that. So first of all, we just set the record straight. You can totally feed the flesh to, to the sheep. If it's a really hard rind pumpkin, maybe soak it for a day. Um, but totally feed the flesh, uh, we, we feed the flesh along with the seeds and the guts. But what I wanted to say, the seeds are kind of where the magic happens on there. So if I ever am in this video talking about, you know, pumpkins do this, pumpkins do that, really talking about the seeds because that's where this magical compound called cucurbitacin uh, is found. So the best study that I found was out of uh, University of Delaware in 2015. So it's a little bit dated, but uh, we're debunking uh, an old wives' tale, so, you know, seven years isn't that bad when this has been had a reputation for probably hundreds of years. What the researchers did is they, they got a small flock of Katahdin sheep. They also got some goats. Um, I think it was, let me see, they had boar goats, which is an amazing meat goat, and Kiko goats or Kaiko goats. Um, I've heard it pronounced both ways. And what they did is they inoculated them um, with, with tapeworms, which is kind of the specific worm that uh, pumpkin is known to, to counter, the, the special compound in there. And they kept these animals in a concrete area and fed them only dry hay in limited amounts. So um, if you know anything about parasites, you know that where sheep usually pick those up, um, and goats and, and cows, pretty much any room in it, is, is from the ground. They pick them up, they eat them, the bug matures within the sheep or the, or the rumen, and they poop out the eggs, which is why they do fecal tests. So if you have it on concrete, that's not really an environment where the, uh, where the parasites can live. So in theory, the inoculated sheep should not be picking up any new parasites. So basically clean sheep, freshly inoculated for this test. And basically for a period of time, I think it was about a month or six weeks, they fed them concentrated doses of cucurbitacin, which was basically just high doses of pumpkin seed oil. And they, I think for some test groups, they also tested like ground up um, pumpkin seeds that they would just kind of put on uh, their dry feed. Basically they took fecal samples every day and um, at the end of it, they processed uh, the sheep to look inside the rumen and the other areas that the sheep and goats might be affected. And basically the results weren't very promising. It, it, it was very clear that um, these, these did not replace or even come close to the chemical dewormers. So does that mean that pumpkin is not a natural dewormer? Basically their results were, you know what, we, there was a lot more testing to be done. There's a lot of people that say maybe um, when you process the pumpkin seeds, uh, you, you lose the goo, the gel that kind of surrounds the pumpkin seeds, that, that that might be more of what does it than the actual compound found inside the seed. So they, the researchers even said there's more testing to be done on this, but, but as of right now, it's not really safe to be a recommended swap for a chemical dewormer. Now here are some thoughts that I had after reading this. 
So number one, let's think about the time frame of this. So this study was done in 2015, and, this, and if this has been an old wives' tale for, let's just say, 100 years, well, think about parasites and what's happened to them ever since we kind of got chemical um, dewormers. Obviously, they knock out the bugs inside your animals faster, but you can create super bugs that way. So it's possible that, you know, what worked 100 years ago was just helping eradicate a, a less dangerous or less hardy tapeworm, maybe. Uh, whereas now we kind of have more more severe tapeworms, perhaps. Okay, another thought I have on this is that pumpkin is typically a cool season crop, uh, and then you're going into winter. So it's possible that the reputation caught on because, um, I mean, sheep just probably aren't dying from parasites in the winter, If you, especially if you live in a cold climate uh, where the snow comes. Uh, that That can really help stop the parasite cycle right there. So maybe there's something to it. Maybe it did work or does work, but it's just not really like a, a stressful time for the sheep. Um, I guess what I'm saying is that if pumpkins were a spring crop, it's possible that they wouldn't have gained that reputation because summer the parasite load is immense, whereas in the winter it's virtually non-existent. Um, and finally, I've, I've as I looked around, I found a lot of forums online where people who do this for, uh, for chickens and also just smaller ruminants, mainly goats and sheep, um, that pumpkins just, they just put on a little bit more weight with pumpkin. It's a great natural way to do it. So if you know how most parasites like kill a sheep, it basically starves them to death. Um, they become anemic and they die basically from that. So when you think about it, um, it makes perfect sense, right? That, that a pumpkin would help with that. If it puts on more weight, gives them a little bit more protein than grass does, that's great. That, that helps fight parasites in its own way. So where do I stand on this? Should you do it or should you not? I, I think there's no question about it. Do it. Um, if it's Halloween time and people are carving pumpkins and, and you've got free pumpkin guts from your neighbors, from your friends, from your family, take the free pumpkin gut. At the end of the day, it's still food that your sheep will either pick at or they'll chow down on it. Um, I've seen both happen here. So um, definitely do it. It's free food for the sheep. And worst case scenario, it's food. Best case scenario, um, it could help slightly um, with, with what they're doing. I'm also a big fan of sheep just having a diverse diet. I think a lot of the problems that a lot of people get into is when they have kind of this, you know, monocrop grass basically. And I mean, sheep need diverse diet. Grass might look the same to you and me, but uh, sheep will thrive if, they're, if they've got, you know, dozens of varieties of grass and roughage to eat. Pumpkin could be a great addition during certain times of the year. So my main takeaway on this is that I'm still learning. We're all still learning on this. Uh, years ago, I would swear by this. And now it's just something where it's like, yeah, go ahead and do it. There's no there's no downside to it. It's free food for the sheep and it might help a little bit. But I think that's the lesson that, that I'm taking away from this. And, and you know, I've done a video. Um, I'll link to it here. It's basically my first two years with sheep when, when I hit my two-year mark. All the mistakes I made, um, I had a really good time filming that, really good time reflecting on it. I've gotten great feedback on it. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. I'm PJ with the High Mountain Homestead, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for coming today.